Hey guys, and welcome to the first video on the new channel. Um, I'm going to be doing all my long form stuff on here because I want to just take any worries out of my head that the algorithms are clashing because I think they are. So, you know, I'm going to, for those of you who like these videos, you have a place where you can go to, and that's all I upload on these ones. And if you like my short stuff, you can obviously stay over there. So, um, with all that being said, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff, and we're going to get going. Bison are being introduced to Russian Arctic to replace extinct woolly mammoths. But why? Large uh, herbivores could transform the local ecosystem by grazing and recycling nutrients, but the climate was probably more important in shaping the vast frigid grasslands of the Pleistocene. Uh, scientists have introduced bison, bison to the Russian Arctic to take a role in the extinct of the extinct mammoths and help restore ancient ecosystems. Twelve plains bison have arrived in Ingalore Natural or Nature Park, a protected area covering more than 2.2 million acres in the northern Yamal Nenets in the autonomous area. The animals traveled 5,000 miles from a nursery in Denmark and disembarked from their long journey three weeks ago, according to a statement. Before they can discover their new home, however, the bison, also known as buffaloes, uh, must first compete, uh, complete a one-month quarantine. They're not called buffaloes. That's just what people call them, but they're not buffaloes. Uh, buffalo can easily adapt to the Arctic because, historically, it is their natural habitat. The Amal Nenets Autonomous Area uh, Department of Natural Resources and the Environment said in a separate statement, uh, they can take one role of, uh, they could take on the role of mammoths, which have been extinct for 11,000 years. Step bison and woolly mammoths roamed the uh, Russian Arctic during the late Pleistocene epoch through a small population of disastrously damaged mammoths. Oh, wait, though a small population of disastrously damaged mammoths survived on an island off of Alaska until about 4,000 years ago. Uh, most of those herbivores died out at the end of the Ice Age. When the climate became warmer and the grassy plains gave way to shrubs and trees. Um, uh, the Pleistocene ecosystem was treeless and uh, had quite thick soils, Mary Edwards. Uh, Amarita, professor of physical geography at the University of Southampton in the UK, told Live Science. Uh, what you can see in geological sections of these kinds of landscapes is that over time, uh, they're storing soil carbon. It's frozen by the permafrost, and it's basically a big carbon stack. Uh, the animals that lumber across these frigid plains contributed to shaping the landscape by grazing and recycling nutrients. It's a nice cycle of animal dung fertilizing the ground and allowing the plants to grow, Edward said. Um, the thought is that the animals maintain the ecosystem. Very interesting idea. I I don't know. I guess, I guess it wouldn't hurt necessarily. It's not like there's... There, there obviously is an ecosystem out there, but there isn't enough of one, and maybe that's because there's not enough herbivores out there. Uh, now, in a bad, uh, in a bid to restore the Pleistocene landscape and its ability to soak up carbon, scientists are introducing large herbivores such as plain fice into a different part of the Arctic. Nikita Zimov, the director of restoration project called Pleistocene Park in Yakusha, um, has been bringing bison over from Denmark since 2019. For our rewilding efforts, we are bringing to the Arctic animals which either lived here during the Ice Age or who could live here in the modern climate, he told Live Science in an email. This year, Zamov uh, bought a herd of 24 bison, half of which uh, he gave Inglore National Park in exchange for 14 musk oxen. Uh, these musk oxen almost went extinct in the early 1900s, and only a few scattered herds remain in the Russian Arctic, he said. With the musk oxen uh, now en route to Pleistocene Park, Zimov said he aims to restore high productive uh, grazing ecosystems in the Arctic and through various ecological me mechanisms mitigate climate change. Ah, this is a climate change thing. Gotcha. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but Edwards is skeptical. Animals can transform ecosystems locally, she said, but the climate during the Pleistocene was probably more important in shaping the landscape, it was cold and too dry for trees and shrubs to grow, so you had grasses and different kinds of herbs covering the landscape, he said, or she said, excuse me. Um, today's climate is much warmer and wetter, meaning the ecosystem may not be suitable for large herbivores. 
You have to change the landscape for them and create pastures, Edward said. But modifying the landscape uh, could have unintended consequences. Thawing permafrost means there is more water in the soil, which, uh, with, which shrubs and trees take up. If you get rid of all those shrubs, everything would get waterlogged, um, Edward said, adding that the stagnant water could contribute to thaw and enhance the loss of carbon from soils. However, introducing these animals to the Russian Arctic is a very interesting idea, Edward said. There's definitely a window uh, for the reintroduction of some of the big lost animals of the Pleistocene. So we're just going to throw a bunch of animals out there that might help climate change and blah, blah, blah. I mean, cool, I guess. I don't, I mean, this is kind of like a shot in the dark and the reasons why. I mean, if you got woolly mammoths back and put them out there, I can understand that. But I don't know, this seems more like a pet project to me, but pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think down below. Obviously, like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate all the help. And uh, see you on the next one. Keep it wild.